full show you have to go on another night yeah all right here we go youtube supposed to good now youtube should be good now youtube should be good now youtube everybody hearing me clearly is everybody on youtube hearing me clearly all right we know say facebook up and running i am now able to see the visuals on youtube from my end so it should be functioning now all right we don't know how we're going i don't know what did i go on for some reason for some reason it's like some kind of force did i work against with tonight <laughs> but we're up and running all right i can see the youtube chat moving right now i can see things happening over youtube even though it did kind of glitch for some reason all right but we are up and running right now and everything <laughs> all right soon soon i say about time good that means that we're good on youtube now all right so youtube here we go on now you see because we did have a little glitch a little malfunction and we don't know what cause it youtube must say that free code the whole system must say that free code more want to share out the stream right now so that who oh, now get the notification can get it all right so now just share it over facebook all right share it in some groups and get the stream out there so that more persons can know say the show actually start can you know send most people as i look for see it kick off nine o'clock under that but when they not see it they probably feel like say nothing now nah, go on so just share out the stream for me right i'm gonna do the same thing right now while i'm doing that more i wanna just join me join me and do it so facebook wanna do the same thing for me right now if you're not over the on facebook right now just share to some groups for me right now right and once you share say unstoppable me share it you know all right would appreciate that so let me get to, let me get to it right now so facebook youtube do the sharing thing right all you have to do right now if everybody share that show you to at least one whatsapp contact in the night yeah that will be powerful all right so share it out right now and let's get some more people in on the topic tonight because as we said this is something that you know people face right women seem to go through this a lot it could be a jamaican who migrated to the u.s and want a, a, a yard man for herself because she has a boy you know i love my jamaican man them or it could be an american who you know want a, a jamaican man a yard man you know these things tend to happen so we have a caller here tonight who wants to share her experience one that one that she had with a jamaican now i am just hoping that her experience hasn't made her bitter towards all jamaican men now you know but let's take a listen to what she has to share with us and then in the end i will open up the phone lines so that if anyone wants to call in you know we can do that all right so we're going to get to the caller right now because like i said i started a little bit late so i'm not gonna waste no more time but before i do that let me make sure that i pay the credits to the sponsors for tonight's show first of all so tonight's show is sponsored by none other than slam iptv now you're here i've been telling you about slam iptv right and slam i have been using their iptv service now for quite a while and it works flawlessly right i mean i tell you you can get channels from all across the world if you want to all watch some russian channel if you can speak russian that is slam iptv can give you any channel you want if you're there in the states and you want to watch some jamaica tv you can get that as well any channels you want slam iptv can provide it and guess what the price is reasonable all right now the number you can reach out is 647-858-4337 that's slam iptv once you reach out to them just make them know say yeah you get the, the hook up from unstoppable and then we work out something for you all right so with that said let's get to the show tonight all right so remember the rules of this platform we do not allow disrespect so you will not allow you will not be allowed to call my my, my guest names right no fool no dunce no jump no no, no no yamed no jackass nothing like that or else you will be blocked without question all right so with that said let's get to the guest tonight carla good night again how are you good night i'm going good i'm sorry that i had you waiting so long but you know man-made machines <laughs> they tend to act up sometimes all right but I know that you want to get into your story, so I won't do too much long talking anymore. I will just give you the platform. It is your show now. Take it over. Um, the only time I will butt in is if I have a question to ask you or if one of the viewers have a question to ask you. Now, 30 minutes within the show, <clears throat> I'm going to give you a water break, and then we'll get right back into it, to it okay? 
Okay. All right. You can start from the very beginning. Go right ahead. So my story starts online. So one day I'm with my friend and my friend was like, why don't you sign up for an online account and try to see how it is dating online? I never did it before. And I was like, sad eyeing the whole thing. So I was like, you know what? I have nothing to lose. So I set up an online account. So I set up the online account and I started not to see anybody that I liked, but I seen this guy and he kept popping up and he kept on saying that we was compatible. And I was like, he's not my type. So I started looking on his pictures and I see that he's from Jamaica and he was cute. So I was like, you know what? He keeps popping up all the time. So let me go in his inbox and just say hi. So I go in his inbox and I say hi. And me and him, we start have a talking. Question to ask you. No. Um, he asked me to get a WhatsApp so we can start voice, minutes within you the know, show. voice messaging back and forth. And that started it. We started talking every day, all day. I had two jobs. I was working two jobs at the time. My one job that I had, I can basically, it was real laid back so I can talk to him. And we talk all day, every day. And I couldn't understand while talking to him because he seemed like a real sweet guy how he couldn't find nobody in Jamaica. And I'm like, you are such a nice guy. You'll find somebody in Jamaica. And then he was telling me, like, you're a nice girl. You'll find somebody in the U.S. And one day after saying that, I was like, he's perfect for me. And he just checked off all the boxes, even though he wasn't quite my type. You know, he checked off all the boxes and I was like, you know what? His heart is pure. I want to see where this goes. And I started really falling for, for him and he started falling for me. So I started asking him questions. First, I wanted to ask him questions about his past relationships. So I asked him a question about his past relationship and why he couldn't really seem to have a girlfriend. And he told me that all his girlfriends he had cheated on him. And I'm like. Okay, that's weird. He looks good and everything, and he seems really nice. Why is everybody cheating on him? And he says that some some of the relationships he had, they got into a bad argument, and they just never talked to him no more. And I'm like, that's dumb. I mean, we have argue. It's, it's not human nature to argue all the time. So why is nobody talking to you? And she, he was like, well, I guess they just move on real fast. And he told me that he had a little bit of a temper. He could be a little bit off high head sometimes. And I'm a nice person and I have a good head on my shoulders. And I'm like, I'm not going to ever push him to that point. You know, um, he told me that he had a temper when people talk to him like he's stupid. And I'm like, I'm not going to talk to you like you're dumb. So we kept talking. And eventually I said, you know what? I got to see if we're going to hit it off because we have so many things in common. and. You know, now in this age, I'm tired of these one a day texter of men. He was so consistent. Every time I text him, bam, he was replying back. He was also asking me how was I doing, asking me if I ate. You know, sometimes he can hear my voice if I was tired and he was like, oh, my baby's tired. And I was like, you know what? Why not? Let me see if we hit it off. So I booked a flight to Jamaica, to Mobe, and I was going to meet him and see if we hit it off. So fast forward to that. I meet up with him and he really didn't have any money. So I knew I was going to be paying for everything on the trip. And I didn't mind if he was cool and we were going to hit it off. I didn't really mind. So I paid for everything on the trip. I brought him some shoes and some clothes down from America. And other than that, we hit it off. We went to the beach. We went, he showed me around Mobe. It was beautiful. We connected. But there's one red flag that came up. I was getting souvenirs for family members back home. And we went to one store and the man knew him. And I was like, this man know you. How you know the man? And he was like, well, I've been here. Like He was like, the last time I've been here was two years ago. I guess I have a memorable face. And when I was shopping around, I noticed they were off to the side talking. And I sat, I took a mental note of that. But I was like, OK, whatever. And I kind of like threw it to the side. So we go back to the hotel and everything. We have a good time. I'm just going to fast forward to 
you know, I had a great time. I'm back home. In no, the US. before before you fast forward, I want to ask you something because we want we want to make sure so we get some context. All right, so you went down. How long were you in Jamaica for? I was there for four five. I was there for five days. For five days, okay. So for the five days that you were there, he was the perfect gentleman to you. Is what you're saying, right? Yes, we held hands everywhere. Yes, he was perfect. He and was perfect. Were there any um, red flags that you might have noticed? Anything that would have said, "Hey, hold on, let me step back a little bit." Was there anything that you saw during that those five days? Other than that, um, other than that Montego Bay situation that you you mentioned, I seen that when we take pictures, he wouldn't really smile. He didn't look pretty happy with me, mm. and I was like, and I kind of threw that to the side. I was like, well, maybe he just don't like to smile, but mm. that's something that I looked back and I was like, there's something wrong with that, you know. He wouldn't, and um, he wouldn't. We were friends on Facebook, and he wouldn't share none of the p- pictures on his Facebook. He made me, he said that I could share my pictures, share the pictures on my page, but he wouldn't do it. And I was like, why don't you put some of the pictures on your page? And he was like, I don't want nobody in my business. I don't want nobody in my business. Mm. And for the week that you were there, I, I, you, you, you said that you basically financed the trip. Yes. Did he at any point for that, for those five days, um, try to cover anything, initiate to cover anything while you were there? No, no. He brought me a necklace. Let me let me not lie. He brought me a necklace because I always wanted like the little Jamaican necklace. Mm-hmm. He brought me one of those. That's about it. Other than that, I paid for everything. Mm. All right, continue. So we hit it off. You know, we go to the airport. We're both crying because I really don't want to leave him. You know, I had such a connection with him. He was so consistent. He was a gentleman. He was just everything that I imagined him to be from talking to him on WhatsApp and on the internet. So I go home and he tells me I'm in love with you. And he said, you know, God told me that you're my wife. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. After five days, well, I know you've been communicating with him before you went to Jamaica, but after five days, he's in love with you. Yes. How long were you communicating online before you flew down to him? Three months. And after you visited was when he decided to tell you that he loves you. Yes. And he was kind of hinting on that before I came down here. Before I came down there, Mm -hmm. he was like, I have something to tell you once you get down here. And he was like, I have strong feelings for you. And I'm just going to wait till you get down here so I can tell you. No, what I want to tell you. No, after after he said those strong words to you, I love you. You didn't think to yourself, "Hey, hold on, this is a little bit too quick for you to be saying those things to me already." What 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 went through your mind when he said those things to you? I felt the same way about him. Okay. I felt the same way about him too. So it was all natural. Okay, all right, go ahead. So it was all natural. And two, he starts saying that, you know, God showed me that you're my wife. And he was like, there's some men who wait a lifetime and wait years. But, you know, after you left, I'm missing you. And God told me that you're my wife. And he to find a man to find a wife, find a good thing. And you are my good thing. You are beyond any woman that I ever met. And I was like, whoa, this is really fast. And he was like, I don't have time to be sitting here waiting. He was like, I know you love me too. And I know you probably, and I know you be thinking about marriage and stuff and marrying someone. And he was like, I know that you love me. I can just see it in your face that you want to marry me. And he said, just think about it for a day or two, or just (laughs) Mm. think about it for a day or two and just let me know what you think. And, you know, he let me go. And he let me really think about it. And I thought about like my past relationships Mm -hmm. and they really sucked and I got cheated on and Mm -hmm. it really sucked. And I remember how this man made me feel in five days and talking to him 
and how consistent he was. And he made me feel wanted and he validated me in every aspect of the, of the way. And see, I'm asking you specific questions because I want the viewers to understand as well as myself. I want to make sure that I understand what things was like before he actually ended up in the States with you. So while you were in the States, after he asked you to marry him, well, not marry him, but he told you that he is in love with you and all of that. What was the communication like? Was there strong communication? He, he would talk to yes. you every day. All that was good. It was perfect. Every, every day, consistent. He knew my schedule. He knew once I'm working the first job, I can talk to him. The second job, I couldn't really have my phone. But mm. it continued, you know. Um, some days, you know, I was kind of like falling back and he would be like, wait a minute. He was like, is there something wrong? Because we talk all the time. I got to hear your voice. I want to hear your voice. You're everything to me. You know, um, my day was bad. Just listening to your voice makes my day all right. Mm -hmm. I need to hear you. Hmm. All right, so what happened next? So, <laughs> I agreed, you know, I agreed to, I was like, you know what? I feel the same way. I said, this is moving a little too fast, but you know what? You showed me a love stronger than I ever felt in my whole entire life. And, you know, I want to marry you too. But I told him I want to do a K-1 visa. And he told he was like, absolutely not. I don't want to do the K-1 visa. And I was like, why not? I want to get to know what I'm getting into. And he sweet talked me out of it. It took him a whole month to sweet talk me out of it. Well, well, for, for those of you who for those of us who don't know what a K-1 is, what is that? Um, it's a 90 day. Have you ever seen it's a 90 day um visa so what he does what it does is it allows the person to come up to whatever country to well to the u.s mm -hmm. and basically stay with you for 90 days um i don't think he yeah he can't work or anything he just stays with me for 90 days we get to see how the relationship goes and we would have to get married before the 90 days and if we don't if we get we don't get married before the 90 days he would have to go automatically back mm -hmm. okay so he talked you out of so, doing that. He talked me out of doing it. And I was like, okay, sure. We can get married. So he said, I want to do things right. I want to propose to you. I said, okay, that sounds cool. But he was like, I have a problem. You know my situation. I don't have no job. So you're going to have to buy your rent. And he said, but it's just going to be temporarily. Because when I get to America, what's going to happen is I'm going to propose to you again. And we're going to have this great big wedding. Wait. He said, I'm going to have a job. I'll be able to get a job and we're going to have a great big wedding. Don't speed over that part there too much. I think that probably fly over some of the listeners' ears. Um, head. Well, lad. Slow down that yeah. part there again. You said, he said to you that you know he doesn't have a job, so you're going to have to buy your own ring? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no. Continue. Go ahead. Go, go ahead. I know exactly how this sounds, but I have to tell the story exactly how it was. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay. No, and trust me, but no one here is judging you. We're not judging you, and we would never mm -hmm. judge you, you know? But we just want to make sure that we understand perfectly mm -hmm. what's going yeah. on. Yeah, so I went and I brought my own engagement ring. I didn't buy nothing too expensive. Just something that looked decent on the hand. And um, I booked my flight to go back to Jamaica. So I got to Jamaica. Oh, yeah, let me back up. So I sent him $300 American money. And I said, baby, I said, go ahead and um, reserve a hotel for us. I get there and we're in his apartment. And I'm like, what happened to the money I gave you? Because we're not supposed to be here in your apartment. We're supposed to be in a hotel. And he was like, well, I used it for bills and I used it to get a mop and stuff. And I'm like, a mop don't cost 300 US dollars. Mm -hmm. What happened to the money? And he was like, well, you know, things came up and I needed to get clothes and all that stuff. So I was like, you know what? I'm not going to ruin the trip. But, you know, let's just go on. So <laughs> we stay in his apartment. 
Um, we ended up going to Mo Bay again because he lives somewhere on the other side of the island. So we ended up going to Mo Bay. So I give him the ring once we go to Mo Bay. And I said, here's the ring. And I said, propose to, propose to me somewhere nice, of course, because he wanted to do that. And I said, just pick somewhere nice. So, you know, I get ready. We're about to go to this restaurant. And in my head, I was like, okay, he's going to either propose to me at this restaurant or maybe at the beach. So we're going out, and some of the staff is outside. And do you know he got down on his knees and he proposed to me in front of the hotel staff? And I could have levitated. I really could have. I was like, what? What is happening? And he proposed to me in front of the, wedding, in front of the um, hotel staff. Um, I noticed two of the girls, they knew me because I came to the host. We had an incident in a hotel where we was chasing a lizard out of our room, out the room. So they recognized me and they were like, go ahead, girl. But I noticed two of the hotel maids, they were in the back room laughing. And I noticed that and I was like, what is happening? So I didn't want to embarrass him. I went ahead and said, yeah. And they took a few pictures. And the deep inside, I was like, this is not how I imagined this to happen. This is not how I imagined this to happen. Um, <laughs> so I asked him, I said, why would you do that? Why wouldn't you do it in front of a restaurant? And he said he didn't want people in his business. And he told me, too, I was not supposed to put the pictures on Facebook. He wanted it to remain private until he got to America. And then he would share the pictures. And I went with the okie doke. So um, I went back to America and I still had a good time with him. He was never mean to me or nothing. We still had a good time. I went back to America and still we were talking consistently. And um, we had an incident that came up where I got to see his temper. Um, I, I get home from work late at night and I tell him, babe, I'm tired. I'm going to bed. So I wake up in the morning and I see that I have like five Facebook, I have all these Facebook messages. I have all these WhatsApp messages. I have them talking like voice notes and everything. So I was like, oh, my baby thinking about me. So I go on there and I see where he said, oh, so you're up at one o'clock in the morning. And I'm like, no, I was asleep. And I go through each and every message and he's starting to get more aggressive. And he's like, why are you ignoring me? I know you're up. I see you active on Facebook. I see you active on WhatsApp. Why aren't you answering me? So you're talking to some other nigga. And then he started getting more aggressive and shit. And one of the voice notes, he was screaming at me like, you're a liar B. You're a liar B. Um, you're a B-I-T-C-H. You're just like the others. And you're lying to me. And I see that you're active and you ignore me. So I get on and I'm like, what is this? And he was like, I seen that you were active. And you're and um you're a liar. You're a liar. You're a liar. You lying. You lying. And I was like, I didn't even get to really say nothing. He's screaming and he's hollering. And I remember saying, it's over. I don't want anything to do with you. It's over. I said, first of all, I was asleep. And I said, when you're in America, I think it remains active unless you turn it off. And I don't know nothing about that. And then he starts screaming at me. And I said, it's over. I don't want nothing to do with you. I go on with the rest of my day. I was really sad, but I went on with the rest of my day. He calls me on my lunch break, and he's crying. And he was like, I'm so sorry, baby. He was like, you know, you know my temper. And he was like, I thought you were playing me. And you know my past relationships, and I thought you were playing me. And he was like, um, I really want you. And he was like, you don't want nothing to do with me. Just tell me, and I'll just erase you from my whole history, and I'll erase all the pictures but um, if you believe in love, he is like, I can, I can fix myself. I'll, I'll pray and I can fix myself. Just give me another chance if you see it in your heart. And I was like, I got to think about it. And I started thinking about the good times we had and how he treated me better than any other man in my whole entire life. And I said, you know what? I'll give you another chance. And he said, but you got to say that you that um, you you seen all my messages and you were active. 
And I was like, but I wasn't. I was really asleep. And he was like, if you just say that, that's all you got to do. Just say those words. Just say that. And he was like, we can just forget about it. And I was so broken at that point. I said, I was active. And that started the foundation of what I'm going to get into later. Um, <laughs> So we started, we started back up again, and I started sending him all this whole time I was taking care of him, basically sending him money through Western Union. And that started back up again, and we started talking again. And then I, it was time for me to go back to Jamaica so we can, you know, start planning the wedding and getting married. So I went back to Jamaica. And um, his, his friends, you know, I gave him... I gave him more money so he can get us a hotel. And I was like, this time, get us for real, for real. Don't waste the money. Give us a, get us into a nice hotel. So when I tell you we pulled up to the hotel and I really levitated off that, off the cab, um, it was like one of those boarding rooms. And I don't know what you call, I forget what you call those in Jamaica. It's like, it's not even a hotel. It's like a whole bunch of rooms. And it's right. like a bed a TV, a fan, and like a real little space that you can shower. And I'm like, what happened to the money I gave you? Because this is not no hotel that I'm giving you money for again. I said, so you blew my money away. Sorry, And he was like, no, it's for the wedding because it costs money for the paperwork and I got to get the pastor and then I got to try to get, um, I got to try to get a photographer. So I used the money for that, and we're in this boarding. We're just going to stay here. And, I mean, it was decent. It wasn't like roaches or nothing like that. It was decent, but, I mean, that's not what I gave him the money for. So um, his friends, he had two friends, a friend that had a car that was riding us around Jamaica while we were trying to get paperwork done. I didn't know nothing about the paperwork, but, you know, he knew about that, getting the paperwork, getting copies and stuff. So they were riding us around. And they were really cool. And um, we had an incident where we stopped at the KFC. Um, we brought them a meal so they could share it. And they had a kid with them. So we brought them a meal. And me and him, we were going to share like a four-piece meal. Then he realized his friend is supposed to be meeting us. But he didn't get his friend nothing. So he was like, okay, well, what's going to happen is, you know, you take a piece of chicken. I'll take two. And I'll give the friend another piece of chicken. So when we got so when the friend got there, I only basically had one chicken out the box. He ate my biscuit and he poured Grace's ketchup all over everything, which I do not like at all. So I only had one piece of chicken and he looked at me and was like, Don't worry, baby, before I leave, because he at this time he picked up a job, a little job. And he said, Before I leave to go to my night job, I'll get you something. So I was like, okay. So later on we go through all our day, you know doing errands, we're sitting in the room chill, chilling. So I asked him before he leave, I said, can you get me something from downstairs from the um, restaurant because I'm hungry. I mean, I only had a leg, a chicken leg. He looks at me and he said, bon McClay, you know, and he looks at me and he said, I'm not getting you nothing. Basically, I'm not even going to try to ask him, but he was like, I'm not, getting, I'm not getting you nothing. And he was like, you already ate. And I was like, I'm hungry. I only had a leg. And it been seven hours. And he said, I'm not getting you nothing. Every time you come here, you've been getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And he, he was like, and it wouldn't hurt you to miss a meal. And I'm not getting you nothing. And he um, got out there. He walked out the room and slammed the door. And all I can do is just sit there and cry. Because he really, like, he really did something to me. Just tears start flowing through my eyes. Now, I was just really, really hurt and flabbergasted. Like, what? So he comes back up in the room and he takes a bag of crackers and he throws them at me. And he said, here. And he said, don't leave this room. And he goes on to work. Um, I, fall, I fall asleep with tears coming down my eyes. I, fall, I cry myself to sleep. And he calls me eventually and he says, I'm sorry. And this is the day that we were supposed to go to. The, this is the day before we was going to go to the Paris pastor to get married. And he was like, I'm so sorry. He was like, I'm just aggravated at work. And I'm just, I didn't mean to take it out on you. 
and he's like, I'm working on it. I'm working on it, and I'm going to work on it. Now, let me ask I you. A, to let me ask you a question. Um, okay, so initially mm-hmm. you mentioned that he was unemployed. At what point did he get a job? Right before, yeah, right before I came to get married to him, he so, got a job. So he got a job. You decided to go down to get married. Did you actually have to finance the wedding as well? Yes. So he didn't yes. contribute anything at all towards the wedding, no. even though he, he got Nothing. a job? Nothing. Nothing. Now, <laughs> he said that all his money was used for rent. I need to ask you one other question, and, go, and then I'm going to let you continue. So mm-hmm. I could have understood when he didn't have a job. All right. Now he got a job. You went down to decide, okay, we're going to get married. Didn't any bells go off in your head to say, hey, you know what? He's using me. At no point did any bells go off in your head to say, this guy is using me. Never. Not at that point. Not at that point. Because I I thought about how he made me feel. All right. Stick that pin right there. We're at the 30-minute mark. I'm going to give you a water break so I could pay the credits to the sponsors. And then I'll come right back to you, okay? Okay, cool. All right, viewers. This one is really interesting. And there's a lot more because remember, he is still in Jamaica. You haven't heard what happened when he got to the, the States as yet. So this is only going to get even more interesting. So if you think you hear anything yet, trust me, there's a lot more. But before we get to that, I want to say thank you to the persons that have contributed to the show so far. I want to say thank you to Patrima for sending in for sending in a cash up contribution. And also Chrissy, thank you so much for sending in a cash up contribution. That is appreciated 100 percent All right. And over here on YouTube, we got Gary Logan sending in a super chat contribution. It's appreciated, Gary. And Lavender Smile sent in a super chat contribution as well. Facebook, if you would like to contribute to the show, we've got the Zell and the Cash Up link uh information right beneath there on the screen i want to say thank you to my sponsors for tonight's show slam ip tv you can get all tv channels premium tv channels if you wish you can get from slam ip tv the number you can reach out to them is 647-858-4337 Three, seven. And the next sponsor for tonight's show is none other than Clean Coochie. All right. You can contact with Clean Coochie over there on Instagram at K L E A N underscore K O U C H Y. And the number to reach them is 876 429 8345. All right. Now, before I get back to the caller, I am going to intentionally hold this off because YouTube is over here being stubborn. All right. We're only at 101 likes. Before we get back to the show, I need to see the likes moving, please and thank you facebook big up everybody over there on facebook for hitting the like button because you always assure say you know do way better than youtube as far as the likes goes all right but youtube you no need to do better 101 like no we can do better than that so before i get back to the caller let's see the likes going up on youtube please and thanks and then we'll get back to the rest of the story from the caller all right it is not hard for you to hit that like button and show some support to the show if you really love the show all right if you really like what's going on if you really like the information that you're getting please hit that like button because it is not hard for you to do all right if you're watching the channel and you you can't find a way how to hit the like button just simply click the x on the right close out the chat hit the like button and then open the chat back up and come back to the show it is very simple all right let's get the likes up please and thanks i should not be begging for the likes every single show night the more you interact with the show is the more youtube will recommend it to other viewers all right so hit that like button and get the likes up all right anyway let's get back to the show we're not going to waste any more time carla so tell me now you're in jamaica and this man basically disrespected you. Have you ever been in a relationship where you were spoken to like that? No. So that's your first experience with a man ever talking to you that way and the way he did? Yes. And at that point, it didn't dawn on you to say, hey, you know what? I need to run and get away from this before it gets worse. Um, later on, when we get further into the story, after I tell you this part, then that did dawn on me. Mm-hmm. Um, so 
we ended up going to the pastor. Well, we ended up meeting his parents first. And I remember meeting his mom, and they were really sweet. Um, I remember his dad looking at me and saying, are you sure you want to go through this? Are you sure? And he was asking me questions like, um, he was like, I want to see if you're good enough for my son. And he said, are you, do you have any babies or have you been married before? And he kept asking me questions, hoping that I would say yes. So he can say no. And I felt that in my spirit, like, why is he asking me these questions? It seemed like he wants me to say yes. So he can say, I'm not good enough because he said he wanted his dad's blessing. Mm -hmm. And um, unless I got that, he wasn't going to, he wasn't going to move any further. And it seemed like his dad wanted me to say yes. To one of those questions. And I kept saying, no, no. And he said, okay, well, y'all go and get married. So we went ahead and got married. Um, I noticed that his friend was the photographer and he was taking pictures. And we were going through the ceremony and I looked at his friend from the side of my eye and his friend was making a disgusting face at me. You would have you thought I was like a big bag of garbage standing there. He gave me a big disgusting look on his face. And then my head, I'm looking at him from the side of my eye, and I'm like, why is this man looking at me like that? Mm -hmm. um, but I threw it off, and then, you know, deep inside, when we went to the part where the wedding, when he, when the pastor was like, is, are you, you know, do you really, do you want to go through this? Anybody have something to say? I kept on thinking in my heart, this don't seem right. But I was like, you know what, I'm just going to go through with it anyway, because he's trying. He's trying. He, he told me he's going to go and really start going back to church and he's going to really get his temper down out of it, um, and back intact. So I said, you know what? And he makes me feel so good and he makes me feel like I'm important and he validates me and he makes me feel like I'm beautiful. I mean, I got picked on every since all through school. I got picked on about my looks and this man made me feel like I'm, the, I'm Beyonce. <laughs> mm. And I was like, that feeling is just awesome. And I said, you know what? I can deal with a temper. We can pray that off. I'm going to go through with it. And I did. I went through with it. Um, everything was great after that. You know, we didn't get to know there wasn't no tempers or anything. Everything was good for the, for the last two days I stayed. I go home and I noticed that he started to fall off. I'm not hearing from him as much as I usually do. And um, eventually Someone in the comment when he section was doing, wants to ask a question. Let me ask you this question. It's a very valid question. Before you went down to Jamaica to get married to this person, um, did you mention this to any of your family members in the States that, hey, I'm going to Jamaica, I'm going to get married? Was this ever discussed with your family? Not at all. No. It was a secret. He wanted me to keep it like that until he came back up here, until he came up here to propose to me. Wow. Mm. All right, continue. Um, so, you know, I noticed that he started to fall off. And I re I always put digi cell minutes and the data on his phone, but still those weren't being used to talk to me. And he started to fall off. Like every day we were talking, it turned to maybe two hours a day. Then he fell off completely. And then it got to the point where the only time he was calling me or saying something to me, he would say good morning to me, and I couldn't reach him all day. And when it was time for me to get paid and go to the Western Union, to give him the number. And that's all I would hear from him. And after a while, I was like, you know what? Something's not right. And he would tell me, oh, because my phone's broken. And what I went on to learn is I was putting lots of, di lots of data on his phone. And what he was doing was blocking me and telling me his data ran out or he he went to sleep with the data on and it ran out. But he, he really had the data. He just blocked me for the whole day. Hmm. I learned that way later. And I was like, you know what? This isn't feeling right. So something told me to go back on the dating site that I met him at. And I go on the dating site and guess who's on there? And guess who's active that's supposed to not have any data? It was him. So I screenshotted the photo, I sent it to his WhatsApp, and I said, it's over, F you. And guess who automatically had data to call me back? Hmm. 
He called me back within one millisecond. Like the minute it got to his phone and as check marks came in, guess who? Guess who was ringing my phone? So um, he tells me um, that was just that, you know, I just went on there to see if you was on there. And I was like, no, you're not going to flip this around on me. I was like, first of all, you lied to me and you told me you didn't have any minutes. You didn't have no data. You kind of threw me to the side, but you're on a whole data side and you reacted, you pervaded your profile. And we're supposed to be married. This is not no boyfriend, girlfriend stuff. We're supposed to be married and you activated it and you're active. And he was like, well, um, he turned, he, and he's a good talker. And he turned that thing and he was like, well, I was just checking up on you because you were acting funny towards me. And I wanted to see if your profile was active. And then at the end, the way, and I forget how it happened. He turned that thing around on me so much. At the end of that call, I was apologizing to him for not trusting him. Hmm. And I was like, sorry, I got, I'm sorry I activated my profile to check up on you. And I was apologizing for not trusting him. Um, we went past that, you know, we moved past that. So we started the paperwork and um, I made, well, I ended up getting a real good job where I didn't need nobody to sponsor. Like my job was good enough to bring him up here. And I ended up paying for all the paperwork, the lawyer, everything to get him up here. So I started paying for it. I paid for everything. So let's fast forward to he gets approved and everything and he comes up. So he gets approved and um, I pay for his. After once he gets approved, I was like, you don't got to worry about nothing. Here's the money. Book your flight. Come up here. So he gets up here and I meet him at the airport. And I'll never forget, I'm going down the escalators to meet him at baggage check. And I remember the voice. And I'm a Christian girl. And I remember the voice of the Holy Spirit come to me and tell me, you have made a big mistake and you will be sorry. And I'm like, what am I supposed to do now? I didn't file the paperwork. He's here. I was like, just forget it. We're just going to see how this goes. And I remember hugging him, and it just didn't feel the same. So we go back to my apartment and everything. He gets settled in. He didn't have nothing but like five, five pairs of drawers, two shirts, three pairs of pants, literally. So I was like, well, I know I'm going to be responsible for the rent and everything and probably get him some clothes. That's fine. So um, time goes along, time goes along, and everything's good. So I would say within two weeks' time, he asked me, you know, he meets a couple of my friends. He didn't meet my family. I'm asking him, meet my family. He was like, I want to meet your mother, but I don't want to meet nobody else. You know, I, I, I just, it's going to, you know, I'm nervous, and I don't want to meet the men in your family because I have full, I have brothers, I have cousins. And I was like, okay, I can understand you're nervous. Okay. So um, two weeks later, he asked me to go to the mall to get him some T-shirts. And he said, give me a size medium shirt. And I go there, and I'm real happy. I said, I'm shopping for my man, and there's some cute stuff here. And I see some, like, Jamaican little patterns and stuff. So I was like, okay, I'm going to hook my man up. So I get home, and I'm so happy. I said, baby, I got you all these shirts. Um, I go to the shower, and I hear him cussing. And um, I get out and I said, what's wrong? And he said, I cannot believe you, you be. I said, what? And, I, and, and he was like, I can't believe this. He said, and you got a college education. And you can't shop for no, no shirts for me. And he hung up one of the shirts and he's a tall man. Even though he had a medium bill, he got long arms. And some of the sleeves were short. And I said, that's fine. I'll just go get you some big, get you a bigger size. And he went off on me. He started cussing at me. He called me a dumb bee. He said I was stupid. And I told you at the beginning, like, I told him how, you know, I got teased and all through school. And, you know, that kind of lowered my self-esteem. And he said, no wonder why they made fun of you and, how, and all through school because you're a dumb bee. And I was like, why would you say that to me? And I started crying. It was just enough to really make me cry. I mean, I got picked on and called every name in the book. But hearing that from my husband just broke me. And that's and just like, because oh, just yeah. because you went to pick up something for him and he didn't like it or you got the wrong size? I got the wrong size and he went off on me. Oh. He went off on me. Um, you know, and he started cussing at me and stuff. And I was able to calm him down. 
I was able to calm him down. You know, I was like, babe, it's not the end of the world. I'll just get you something else. And that was the incline of things to happen. The next day, I just couldn't do nothing to go on within time. I just couldn't do nothing right. You know, when it came to the dishcloth, I always kept the dishcloth on the side of the sink. He keeps it on a faucet. He would get mad at me because I would put it on the side of the sink. And he would just go off. And I mean, and, and I understand sometimes you get disappointed or frustrated, but he would go into a full temper, um, shouting at me, calling me out my name. Um, grocery shopping was horrible. You know, he would gaslight me for grocery shopping. I would have a list of everything we wrote down, and he would try to tell me that I didn't write it down right. Um, sometimes I would go to the store and they didn't have what he wanted. And I understand when you have a taste for something, you really want something they don't have it. We say, oh, that sucks. He would go into a temper and say, I lied about it. I just didn't want him to have it. I lied. He would start screaming at me. Um, one time he actually went back up to the store behind me and they put the stuff out. They were already putting stuff out, but they didn't have what he wanted at that time. And when he went up there, they had it and he came back and cussed me out. Um, you know, he accused me of losing laundry. Now, all this, all this started to happen. How soon after he got to the States? Two weeks. And he didn't even have no social security card, no papers, no nothing. Two weeks. Why didn't you just simply say, you know what? This has been happening in Jamaica. It's happening here. You know what? I'm going to get this man out of the country. Why didn't you just do that? I married him and I'm a Christian. And I, and I wanted to so bad, but I said, I got to make this work. And I said, if I pray to God hard enough, God could change him. I said, if I pray hard enough and I work on him hard enough and I love him and I show him real love, he'll change. And guess what? I noticed that his tempers, things he would get mad about, it stopped. And I said, God is really answering my prayers. He really is answering my prayers. You know, he's nice. He's, you know, that stopped. And, um, and two, one day, I started, I picked up another job because, you know, he wanted to save, you know, he wanted, he wanted to get a car. And I was like, let me get another job. Wh at this time, who? Uh, hold on. At this time. Wait, 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 wait. Was he working? Not at this time because I'm about to get into that. I'm about to get into that. Um, he wasn't working at this time because we found out that he needed to get a GED, American GED, in order for him to work. Because all his credentials from Jamaica wasn't valid up here. So he had to get a GED. So this time, at this time, he's getting a GED. And he's taking classes. So you took him from Jamaica and still had to be um, taking care of him in the U.S., where he mm. was insisting on being disrespectful to you, even though you're the one taking care of him there. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Wow. And at this time, like, things were kind of getting better. So I was like, okay, God, things are getting better. Things he get mad about, he's not getting mad no more. So I took the extra job. So I remember coming home one day, and I get in the door and he's sitting there right on the edge of the couch like a black mama would do if their kid was acting up in school. And I'm like, what's wrong? Before I can even close the door, he said, what are you doing on here? And it was an emo account. My cousin works for the military and he'd be going all around the world. And because he made me deactivate, you know, when he got my husband got here, he made me deactivate my um, WhatsApp because he's like, I'm here. There's no reason for you to have it. Mm -hmm. So. My cousin was like, get emo. So he seen my emo account and he was like, what is this for? And I told him and he wasn't believing me. He thought I was talking to someone else. He started mushing me in my face. He like mushed me, like took his fingers and kind of like, you know, po po you know, kind of shoved poke my you. forehead back. Right, poke you in your, in your face, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, poke me in my face. And then he told me I was lying to him and he took my phone and he threw and he broke my phone. Um, 
he ran back to the back of the apartment and he grabbed my book. And he grabbed my book and it was a journal. I was writing down everything I was going through with him because at this time, when the stuff happened two weeks from then, he was putting me on a silent treatment where he wasn't talking to me. And I wrote it down and he found it in a journal and he made me rip it up. And he was like, don't write about me ever again. I'm telling you, don't play with me because I will pack up my stuff and I will leave if you keep if you write about me ever again. So I was like, OK, I was scared. I remember going to sleep. I told him, OK, I calmed him down, said whatever to diffuse the situation. I remember going to sleep and I was like, I'm not sure about this. I'm not sure about this. I was like, God. You said he was going to get better. He was. But what is this now? And I was like, and I know he ain't going to ever hit me and put his hands on me because he got sisters. He got three sisters. And he wouldn't like it. And he always told me, like, I don't want nobody treating my sisters badly. And it was a couple of times he had to really, you know, confront his sisters with boyfriends. And I said, he wouldn't hit me. He just got a little temper. I just got to love him a little bit harder. So, um... He um, he would have me do laundry and he would accuse me of losing articles in the laundry that I know he didn't even have. And he would go and fly off the handle about that. And I was like, Jesus, man, he was getting better. But look at this now. And I just I just didn't know what to do with it. I didn't know what to do with it. I said, I just got to pray a little harder. I went online and I said, maybe if I can see another story that relates to me, I can know what to do. And every Christian, every Christian channel told me to stay with him and pray harder. I didn't see no American woman who married a Jamaican guy who's abusing her and what to do. I didn't see none of those stories. So I said, I just got to love him a little bit harder. So one day, um, I, I let home, we went to a cook up, my friend's cook over, cook out, and he met my friend's mother. And my friend's mother is um, Caribbean, of Caribbean descent. So um, she took me to the side and she said, are you happy? And I, at this point, I wasn't happy with her. And I lied and said, yeah. So she took me in front of him and started complimenting. She started saying, you are beautiful. She said, I'm proud of you. You're a college educated woman. You got this degree. You got this degree. You work at this big firm and you got this job and it looked like you're losing weight. And I looked at him and he made this face that I can't describe. He looked angry. So I said, thank you. And I walked outside and he grabbed my hand on a porch. And I never forget. He looked at me and he said, she's telling a lie. You're, she's telling a lie on you. You aren't losing weight and you're a pig. If she only seen how much you ate. And then she t and then she, he told me that like my friends that he met at the cookout were queens and they were beautiful queens and I was not. And I basically downgraded their group and somebody came out on the porch and he let me go. And I just remember just sitting there like, I don't even know. I was like, I got myself into a doozy. Then um, he started the GED classes. Like he was starting the GED classes. And I remember two weeks with him taking a GED class. He came home and unfortunately, it's a feeling that all women feel at one point. And it's familiar to all women. I felt a feeling in my heart when he hugged me. And I said, this man is cheating on me with somebody at the GED class. He started like really trying to look good to go to the GED class, put it on cologne that looked good. You know, one time he went to the class and I seen him and he looked like a whole Instagram male thought. He had gray sweatpants, a fresh shape up. He almost looked like he was American and he was really going out his way to look good. And, um, You know, I just felt it. He was cheating on me. And then he goes and he tells me that there's a girl at the GED class of Jamaican descent that got a crush on him. And he told her that she, he's married and she just keeps um, smiling at him. And that just made me that just made me angry. And I said, you know what we can do? We can put everything in her name and she can take care of you. 
and something must have happened between them because, you know, the GED classes stopped and, you know, there was a no more mention of the girl. And um, I just didn't know what to do. I knew I had to get away, but I didn't know what to do. And then eventually, um, he started really disrespecting me, coming home all poor parts of the night. So he started, um, he started, in, so he got his GED, he found, let me fast forward, he got his GED and he got a job. And he got a job that was really good. Um, with the job, he ended up getting a car. And it was a really good job, a good paying job where he got more than me. And I said, I'm going to sit right here and see what he does with this money. So after he got warmed up to the job, I said, I'm going to sit here and see what he does and see if he offers to contribute. And he didn't contribute anything. So I asked him, I said, um, are you going to, and I asked him, I, I said, he always say that I have an attitude. So let me calm down. And I asked him, I said, I'm so proud of you, baby, that you got this new job. I know you have me. But I said, can you contribute to the household? He looked at me and he said, I'm not giving you a damn thing. He said, you should have never brought me up here. He, and he said, and I'm paying for my car and my insurance, and that's it, and I'm not giving you nothing. And he didn't. He didn't give me anything. And um, He said you should have never brought him there? He, 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 he actually said those words to you? Yes, he said I should have never brought him up here. If I wasn't, well, he, I should have never brought him up here if I wasn't willing to support him and pay for everything. So I was like, so we're looking at houses. And I said, how are you going to help? And he said, you're going to figure that out. You're going to figure it out. I'm not giving you nothing. How long, how long after he was there? How, th this is how long now? Is it? Has it been four months, six months, a year since? It been, at this time, it was like eight months. So he was still fresh, mm -hmm. basically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he told me that, and I was like, okay. So I was like, I'm going to still keep praying. I'm going to still keep praying because, you know, when we get into these incidents, you know, what it would happen was we would get into an incident and then it would get better and we would be good. Like we would laugh and play. He would be cut on me and we would laugh and all that stuff and everything would be fine. And then an incident happened and everything would go downhill. So the next incident that happened was he went out, he went, he decided to go to the bar with his friends he met at the job. I said, cool, have a good time. Even at this point, I wasn't allowed to hang out with my friends without him. So I was like, well, it's cool. So um, he goes out with his friends and everything in my city closes at two o'clock. So I was like, the only thing that's open a little bit after is like the AHA. So, you know, the club eaters can eat and maybe, and it closes at, at four. So I was like, okay, I'll give him time to get home. So four o'clock call comes, I call him and I was like, where are you? And he's like, I'm on my way home. Five o'clock come, I call him and he say, you know, I'm on my way. Just hold on, I'm on my way. Um, I call him back and he turns his whole phone off. This man didn't come back in this house until nine o'clock in the morning. And when he opened the door, I said, where the F were you? And I don't cuss, but I was just mad. And he told me, he got up in my face and he pointed at me and he pointed his finger in my face and he said, when I'm out, you leave me the hell of mine. He said, I come home when I want to. I'm the man. And you better be lucky I'm even coming home. So when I'm out, you leave me the hell alone. Don't call my phone. And I get here when I get here. And I said, I'm not putting up with that. I am not putting up with that. The total disrespect. I can't even go out with my friends for a happy hour for 20 minutes without you blowing me up. And he was like, and I was like, I can't even go out at all without you or you blow me up. And you can do that to me. I'm not putting up with it. And then he comes up to me and he punches me in my face. Mm. Mm -mm. I remember losing all my breath and I was like, you hit me. You really hit me. And he said, now lay your A down and close your F and ass. Or you, there's more of that where that came from. And I was like, um, no, you hit me. And 
I started like, you know, trying to get my stuff. And then he st- he got down on his knees and started holding my legs. And he said, I'm sorry, baby. I'm sorry. I'm just frustrated. I'm just frustrated. Work was hard. And, you know, I was kind of drunk. And what happened was my friend rode me out there and he got drunk. And I stayed at his house. And I, I was just frustrated because I couldn't come home. I had to wait for him to sober up so he could drive me home. And I'm just frustrated. Forgive me. Oh, my goodness. And he just started crying. He's like, oh, my God. Well, God has really been doing, been trying to help me and stuff like that. And I go and I do something stupid like this. And he was like, I'll never put my hands on you again. I'll never put my hands on you again. And I was like, just mad, just sitting there. And he was like, I promise I wouldn't. And he said, look at me, please. And we'll pray every night. We'll pray every night. And I'm a good man. And I promise it was just, I was frustrated. And I was like, you better not hit me again. Now, why didn't you just call the police right then and there? Because it, see, with every step of the way, it, it, it started to escalate. It started with him verbally abusing you. Then he started poking you. And then it went to him actually slapping you. Why at that point didn't you just say, you know what, I'm going to call the cops? Because obviously it's getting worse. I just, I, I believed him. I looked in his eyes and I seen that man that I fell in love in Jamaica with. And I said, this is going to get better if I pray hard enough. And I seen that man for that one second. I said, I'm going to give him another chance. Mm-hmm. I said, he ain't going to hit me again. And I said, he's, he's not going to hit me again. I believe him. Until <laughs> um, every week, it, well, one day I was at my mother's house and he called me and he asked me about the mailbox key. And I was like, it's on the table. And he was like, it's not there. So I was like, okay, well, when I get home the next day after work, I'll look for it. So I came home and I couldn't find the mailbox key. And um, I ended up calling the landlord so they can give us another key. And they was like, well, unfortunately, it's Friday. You got to wait till Monday. So he gets home and I was like, I couldn't find it, but the key is $50. I'll pay for it. And it's going to be up at the rent office. And stick a he pin. went off stick, on me. Stick a pin right there for a second, because I think we've mm-hmm. gone a little bit too far. Okay. Well, remember initially I had asked you if you told your parents or your family that you were going down to get married, right? Now, Mm -hmm. what I want you to backtrack and do is tell me when he actually came from Jamaica and came to the U.S., how did your family find out that you got married or did they ever find out that you got married? Nope, that didn't happen. Um, Every time I would ask them, we would have like, because my my family is a big family. We would have cookouts. I would invite them. He would schedule to work that day. He was sick. Or he would purposely say, oh, well, they called me in last minute to work overtime. Or they got me working mandatory overtime. And it became every time, you know, something was always up. And it never happened. And, you know, at the end when I was looking at it, I was like, dang, it was always something. So they didn't know. And he didn't get a chance to re-propose to me or nothing again. Um... He just avoided them. He avoided me and my family. He met my mother, but other than that, other than that, coming to outings and stuff, he always scheduled to work. So when he met your mother, he, he met your kid. mother as who? Your boyfriend or just a friend or what? As my boyfriend. He didn't want me to tell until he was ready to propose to me. So. And at this time, yeah, you were so already have- you you were already eight months in 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 him being in the U.S. Mhm, mhm, <laughs> yes, sir. So, um, I lost the mailbox key, and he started really shouting at me, and he started mumbling underneath his breath how I lost it. And I was like, um, what's the big deal? You lose everything. He lost money. He lost keys and everything. And I was like, you lose everything if we move on. I lost one thing. I said, it's going to be replaced. He didn't like what I said. And he started throwing water on me. And I said, can you please stop throwing water on me? Because I got this phone in my hand. 
he comes out the kitchen and he snatches my phone. I kind of resist. And he comes back over and he snatches my phone out my hand. And he puts it underneath the pillow with his phone and he rushes me. He is six foot four, 250 pounds, and he rushes me like a footballer. And I just, it happened so fast. And he started punching me and beating me and punching me and kicking me. And he dragged me off the bed by my plaques. And I had Miss Seeley plaques. And he dragged me off the bed by my plaques and started kicking me and beating me. And he was like, cover up your face. And then I started screaming. And he said, shut the F up. We have neighbors. And if you keep on screaming, I'm going to give you something to scream about. And I remember praying to God. And I said, God, help me. And for some reason, all I do is remember being on top of the bed. And he's on top of me with his hands around my neck. And he started choking me. And um, I just remember looking into his eyes and just seeing black. And I remember seeing my life flash before me. I see me as being like a baby in a bathtub. And my mom was washing me up. And I see me growing up through the stages of his life. And then I even seen the fun times me and him had in Jamaica. And he was choking me. And everything went blank. And I remember saying, God, I hope my mom know I love her because I have a feeling this is going to be it. And something told me to go underneath his fingers that's around my neck and just press as hard as I can. And I did. And he let go. And I remember just gagging and coughing on the bed. And he just casually takes off his clothes and go in the shower. Um, I was just put frozen there, just frozen, just frozen. My mind said, call the police, call the police. And then my other side was like, what if he kills you? You see so flow all the time. What if he kills you? And I said, I'm not going to call the police. And I didn't because I was too scared. And in my city, they failed people. And I was scared that what, what am I going to do? If I call the police and say something, they're going to just put him right back with me because we're married. And what if this man kills me? And I was just petrified. And I knew, God, we hit the breaking point where I can't no longer pray for this man no more. I have to really try to really disconnect myself from him and get myself out of here safely. Because this man came up here with nothing and he has nothing to lose and he would take me out. So I remember just praying to God and was like, just help me calm him down. And um, calmed him down that night. And I said, God, you got to get me out. You got to get me out of this. Before you proceed, let me ask you yeah. let me ask you a question before mm -hmm. you continue. Mm -hmm. At this point, were you staying with him out of love or out of fear? This point, fear. Because once he put his hands on me, all the love went out the window. I mean, that point, I mean, even when he slapped, he punched me, I still loved him. But when he beat me like that, all the love went out the window. All the love. And he and he's like I said, he loves I didn't tell nobody this, but he loved listening to you. So he probably might be listening to it here. And he, if he's remembering right after that, I stopped saying I love him. I stopped hugging Wait, him. You and said I he listens caring. to me as in my show. Yes, that's how I knew about your show. We listen to you. We used to listen to you all the time. Mm. So I stopped saying I loved him. I just stayed with him because I was fearful. And I said, people don't survive this. And I got to be like a, you know, I got to take my hand out the lion's mouth gently. I got to like be like a bird moving to another nest. I got to take bit by bit by bit by bit. I can't just say I'm leaving and walk out this door because that's not going to happen. So what ended up happening was I made a date to leave him. I made a date to leave him. I said, this is when I'm going to leave him. I went over to my mother's house because I'll go over to my mother's house to take care of her. And I got on the phone with the women's shelter and I got, you know, resources so I can come up with a date, what to do. I talked to my job because at this point I was working from home. They had me bring the equipment in 
you know, um, and I started kind of disconnecting myself from him bit by bit. Um, we had an incident where, you know, I made a date, but the date ended up being earlier because I thought one day I went up to the Walmart with him and he asked me to get him something and they didn't have it. And he went into one of his tantrums and I thought he was going to drive us over the mountain, the abatement mountain. And that really scared me half to death. Um, you know, it really puts a fear in me that I didn't know. And I said, I got to leave earlier than this. And there was another incident a week after where, you know, me and him, we were intimate and he thought the condom broke and he asked me to get plan B. And I, in my head, I was like, okay, thank you for telling me because I'm trying to get away from you in my head. I don't need that. So I took the plan B and I started getting sick off of it. And I started getting sick like I was pregnant. But I knew I wasn't. I knew I was going to get sick off of it. And he knew, he seen the sicknesses I was going through. And he called me and he, he called me when I was at my mother's house and told me I better not be pregnant. He knew my period was supposed to be coming the next week. And he said, I better have my period because if I don't get my period, he was going to box me down and box me in my face and he was going to leave me. And he talked to me like he was a, a celebrity. And I was some kind of groupy stripper trying to get trapped home. And that's the way he talked to me. And he blocked me for the rest of the day. So I ended up getting so sick, I had to go to the hospital. And I wasn't pregnant. It was the reaction from the pill like I knew it was. So I came home. I remember throwing the papers at him saying, I'm sick of this. I can't do this. Like, I'm sick of this. And he looked at the papers and was like, I'm sorry that I reacted like that. But you made me mad. And you were screaming at me. Another important question, and I have to ask this mm -hmm. question. So, he was beating on you. Every opportunity he got. Did you ever speak yeah. to a family member? Did you ever speak to a friend? Did you ever say anything to anyone about what you were going through? No, I was scared to. He told me that if he even found out or even got a whiff, at this point in time, he had my social media and everything connected to his phone. So every message I got or any, even if I tried to reach out, I didn't know if my text messages was like that. So I was just terrified. And I hear about these stories going left and I didn't want no innocent person to get hurt. So I didn't tell anybody and I was just scared. I didn't want, that's all I can do is just think about him not being, a, not willing to risk everything and somebody innocent getting hurt. So I, I was like, I'm going to leave this between me and God. I remember our previous conversation. You, you, you mentioned that he told you that you promised that you would be sub, you would submit to him or something like that before you mm. came there. Yes. Um, he, you know, in every argument, he would basically tell me, like, I'm the man. And when you married me, you said that you would obey me. And you took vows that you would submit to me and I'm the man. And he would always say that, like, I'm the man. And I couldn't question him. I couldn't do anything because if I would question him, he would call that back talking him. Mm -hmm. He would call that back talking him. So basically, he took my power and he took my opinion and he took my mind, basically. I didn't have an opinion because everything was stupid. So I didn't have that. Um, and I was too scared to tell anybody. And I had a whole minute family. And I felt like I was on a sinking boat with him. Sinking. And people were floating by asking me, do I need help? And I, I wasn't willing to get off. And I mean, I wanted to so bad, but I was scared what was going to happen. Um, I came to an ugly realization that one day... I was doing laundry and he asked me to do his bandana. He had, at this time it was COVID and he was using a bandana to cover up his face. So he asked me to do his bandana inside the um, laundry. So I go to the bathroom and I come back and he always accused me of losing things. So I have to take pictures of everything. And I didn't see the bandana, but he was in one of his moves. So something was like, don't even ask, just do the laundry. So the next day I, I come back upstairs. Well, I come back upstairs and, fold the laundry the next day he's about to go out and he says where's my bandana i was like it was gone 
And he was like, no, I gave you my bandana and you lost it. So he was like, go back downstairs and see if it's there. So I go back downstairs, it's not there. And he says, you know what? I'm going to go downstairs. If my bandana is not coming up, it is not co- do not show up down there. If my bandana ain't down there, when I come up here, I'm going to box you down. I said, oh, my goodness. So he leaves the door. And I remember this voice of the Holy Spirit came, a voice came over me and was like, look in his old clothes. So I look in his old clothes. I don't see anything. Something said, look in between the suitcases. And I'm like, why would it be between? I look between the two suitcases and guess what was folded up real tiny? The bandana. I grab it and I hear him opening in the door. And when he opened the door, he got his fist already bought up, ready to punch me. And I throw the bandana at him and he looks at me and he gives me this look. And he said, where did you find this? Where did you find this? And I said, you would have beat me for no reason. You didn't give it to me. It was in between suitcases. And I was so relieved that I found it, that he left. He ended up leaving, you know, taking care of some business. And I sat there and I thought about this thing. And I said, you know what? He hid it so he can beat me. He's hiding things around the house. And it made me question the mailbox key and everything the first time he beat me. And I said, he probably hid it so he can beat me. And it made the back of my neck stand up. And I said, I, I really have to get a date sooner than, than what I thought it was going to be to get, to get out of here. So I started looking for apartments. And what happened was I ended up getting two raises at my job. But I didn't tell him about it because I knew I would need that money to save up. And I ended up getting me an apartment on the side you know, furnishing it and everything. And I was like, so when the day comes, I can just go ahead and leave them. And um, Mm -hmm. what happened was he ended up saying that he was going to go out of town with some friends. And I was like, perfect. In my head, I couldn't let him know that, but I was like, perfect. I can just go ahead and go. And the night before, I felt like he knew that I might be leaving. Cause he started talking about taking me on trips. I've been asking this man to take me to the KFC down the street, down the street, and he didn't want to take me nowhere. <laughs> he didn't want to take me on no dates, nothing. But all of a sudden, now we can go to DC. Now we can go to New York. Now we can go but, here and there. But and now we can this, go to Florida. Throughout this marriage, huh? throughout this, throughout the, I'm gonna call it what it is. Throughout this abusive marriage, right? Um, mm-hmm. He got employed. He told you he was not giving you any of his money. He was not going to spend any money in this house, whatever, right? Mm-hmm. At, was, there, was there any point throughout this marriage where he actually made you feel like his wife? I understand in the beginning, before you got married, he treated you like a queen in Jamaica and all of that. Was there at any point where he actually made you feel like his wife? Before you answer that, give me a second. Um, Carmen, thank you so much for that uh, cash up contribution that you sent in. It is totally appreciated. Thank you, Carmen. Was there ever a point where he made you feel like his wife? No. He made me feel like uh, I'm gonna just. He made me feel like an ins- like an Instagram fight would think would do his do her sugar daddy. Mm. You know, he made me feel like I was disgusting. He made me feel like he I wasn't attractive to him. He would call me fat. I gained weight <laughs> and he called me fat. Um he called me all sorts of horrible names. Um he didn't act like he was attracted to me at all. Sometimes I would look at him and he was looking at me like I was disgusted and I'm far from disgusting. I'm a beautiful dark skin plus size lady. You know, I could go out on the street with him and get attention. And he would get really mad about that. He, You know, and I just didn't know what was wrong with me, why he didn't love me and he didn't like me. And I knew that pretty in my heart that he didn't really care about me. Once he came to America, I realized that he didn't really care about me. And I knew that deep inside, but I was like, I pray hard enough. God could turn this thing around. I didn't marry him, so I have to stick with him. I learned that at church at a young age that God don't like divorce, so I'm stuck with this. So I might as well just pray and maybe God will do something. And when I found out that God 
you know, I was like, God, God don't want me to die in this. And this is where this is coming to. You know, God gave me a dream of my funeral. I seen my funeral and I seen the newscast and I seen Soul Flow actually covering my story about him abusing me. I seen that in a dream and I seen my funeral and I said, I got to go. I mean, I have to jump out this window and break my leg to save my life. And I did, I, you know, I did that, you know, the day before he knew I was going to leave, I guess he felt that. And I asked God, I said, if you want me to leave, you're going to put your angels around me. And this man tried to beat me before I left the day before I left. And for some reason, it was like the angels were holding his hands back and he got frustrated. He said, I can't hit you. I can't hit you. And I ended up calming him down and I went to work. And I would never forget, I went to work and he called me. And I guess he thought maybe I doubled up and went back home. And he never calls me and he calls me and was listening to the background. He said, where are you? And I said, I'm at work. And he told me to hold on and I couldn't hear him. And the next thing I know, he starts screaming at me and he told me, B. He said, I told you, shut the F up. And I said, I couldn't hear you. And he was like, you know what? You've been acting spooky like ghosts. And he said, and you've been acting sneaky. So what's going to happen is I'm not going to go out of town with my friends no more. And I don't think you're going to ever go to your mother and you're not going to see your mother again and bring your age straight home. And he hung up. And I said, okay. And he hung up. And I remember the back, the hairs on the back of my neck standing up. And I said, I got to do it today. I'm right down. I work right in the middle of town. I went right to the courthouse. I filed a PFA. While waiting for the PFA, I took all my social media, changed the passwords, and got second verification. So even if he would happen to guess my password, he also needs the key to me. He would actually need my physical phone in his hand to get the secret key. Um, you know, I felt so powerful in that moment and scared at the same time that I'm finally starting the process to get my power back. Um... I went ahead and filed for the PFA. I had to go back to the neighborhood to get the police, the PFA, so they could serve him. I went back to my apartment. I called my family to come over my apartment and I told them everything that happened. And my brother was like, I can't believe that you were so dumb and stupid. And he said, I don't blame you because you just wanted love. But he said, what if that man would have killed you? We would have never knew nothing. I didn't even know you had a boyfriend. Mm-hmm. and you know you know it was more like he was upset but he was like i'm not gonna get too mad at you because you did something strong you left and you're breathing because most girls they don't leave this same breathing so um right at that moment the cops called and they was like okay well we served him at the apartment and when they served the person they got to leave and two, they're able to come back into the next day. And then that's when I get the permanent PFA. And then we can, you know, try to get him back and get his stuff, whatever. So um, the cops called and they said, we don't usually do this, but um, your husband was crying and he was on his knees and he was crying. And he said that he, he asked us to tell you that he is sorry and he never thought it was going to come like this, come to this. And... I remember breaking down and saying, that's not fair. You know, they let me go. And I remember saying, he don't get to say that. You know, the night before I left, another detail, the night before I left, he went ahead, you know, he went ahead and told me how he was a bad man in Jamaica and how he hurt people. And that's why he had to come here. He hurt a whole lot of people. And I didn't know how to feel about that statement that the police told me. But then again, I felt powerful. Because this man that been beating on me, been abusing me, been telling me he's a bad man in Jamaica. Now he's reduced to being on his knees, crying to police like a bitch. And, you know, and I and I just it made me feel so powerful. But I was scared because, you know, still in America, they said they say the um, 78, 78 hours after a woman leaves. That is the most dangerous time that anything can happen to her. And I was scared. And I know this man didn't know anywhere where I was, but I was just, you know, I was scared. 
So that night, you know, my cousin came from in town and he's a police officer and he stayed with me. And then I ended up going back to the courthouse, getting my permanent PSA. And I got that instantly. And he tried to fight me about the permanent PFA. I, got, I ended up getting a permanent PFA for five years on him. Um, he fought me for it. And I remember asking my lawyer, I said, what is he saying? Is he saying that this stuff happened? My lawyer said, he never denied beating you and putting his hands on you. He just cares. He's just worried about his citizenship in his green card. And so once I got the PFA, they told him basically if he bothers me and so much has caught me, they're going to deport him. And I haven't heard anything from him. I mean, I did get divorce papers. And so did he did he ever get his green card? I have no idea. I, I, did, I know he was supposed to get like if he was smart enough, he, his interview was like they because of COVID, it was held up. So he his interview came up like maybe two months later. And um, he had the interview, but I don't know what went, went down with that. And I did write a letter to um, the embassy, to the, um, to, the, um, to the people saying what happened and a copy of the PSA. Mm -hmm. Because I couldn't press any charges. I had no proof of what happened. You, you, okay, I understand that you said that you were scared while all this was happening. But when he was hitting on you, right? When he was hitting on mm -hmm. you, were there ever any bruises um, that were visible that anyone, any one of your friends or co-workers could have seen? Um, there was a scratch underneath my eye, but he made sure I did my makeup right. Like, he was like, he made sure I did my makeup right to cover it up. I did have bruises on. I had two goose eggs in the back of my head and some bruises on my ribs. And I did take pictures of those. But we had another incident where he found them in my phone and made me delete it. Hmm. So I was scared to even record any of that stuff because he would do random phone checks where he would take my phone and go through my phone randomly. All right, so and I was terrified. We're we're at the end of the show, but I want mm -hmm. to ask you this question. So, how did all this hap um how did this affect you? And what have you been doing to heal since this happened? So, I knew my mind wasn't right. I knew my mind wasn't right. So, I got right into therapy. Um, and I remember I got into therapy so I can try to heal from that. And I remember getting on my knees and I said, God, I give you everything. And I gave my life over to Jesus completely. Because I said, it was only you that took me out of this alive because women don't survive this. In fact, that same day I seen a funeral of a beautiful lady who, young lady who died from getting beaten. And I said, there's a reason why you saved me, God. I said, what is the reason? What do you want me to do with this? And he said, what I want you to do, my daughter, I want you to tell your story to many platforms that you can. Because there's many American women that's going through this and they don't know what to do. And they think that I want them in these relationships because they're Christian. They think that I don't like divorce. But he said, I don't like divorce, but I'm a forgiving God. And I make everything for a purpose. I wouldn't sit here and create, create, create my daughters for them to get die in these relationships. So what I want you to do is tell everybody and tell my daughters that they're in this relationship and, or in a situation like this, get on your knees and pray to me and pray that I get my angels to protect you on your way out and ask, and ask for me to forgive you for not seeking my counsel and seeking my face before you get into this relationship and I will forgive you. And matter of fact, I will clean you up and I will give you a happy life. I just need you ha I just need you to really hold that in your heart, women, because 
he wanted me to tell everybody, if you're in a situation like this, just get on your knees and pray to God for a way out. And he would get he would get his angels to protect you because he put us on this earth for a purpose, not to get killed by a sick man. And he told me he he's going to bless me to go around the world and go around the USA to tell my story so I can protect women. He told me he wanted me to go to counseling school, which I'm in. I'm in college so I can be a counselor and I can get my master's for it. Because he said, I'm going to protect many women. I'm going to save many women. And he said, I'm also going to heal many kids because all my husband was was an abused kid. He was an abused kid. He got abused by his father. And he turned out to be an abuser himself. And he said, God said that he wants me to protect him and protect women. Mm -hmm. So I'm telling you, if you're in a situation like this, and I understand how crazy this story sounds, I was in a broken place, but I'm looking back at this powerful. This is not going to hold me down at all. And he has no power over my life. So I'm speaking. If you need help getting out, use your resources, use your resources around you and get on your knees and ask God to protect you with his angels and get you out. Because he has a purpose for every living, breathing thing on this earth. And he do not want you to stay in a marriage that can kill you. It grieves him. And he wanted me to get on this platform and share that, that he will forgive you. Mm -hmm. And that's it. Carla, listen, I am so sorry that you went through this ordeal. Um, you mentioned that you had other bad relationships, you know, but none as drastic as this one correct yes and i guess and as bad as this sounds i'm so thankful for this because it showed me how broken i was and it repaired me from the inside out mm -hmm. and i'm looking back on this and it's going to help me save many of people and i'm so grateful because without this i wouldn't be as close as god close to god as i am right now was is, is you know i'm is is this the first time you're ever dating a Jamaican? No. So I dated an older man before. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't really that serious though, but I did see an older man, an older Jamaican man. And it wasn't that, that type of experience with that person, correct? It wasn't that type of experience with that. <clears throat> I mean, it didn't work out though, but I mean, it wasn't that type of experience. Does did did this experience have you standoffish when it comes to dating a Jamaican? Oh no, I know that all Jamaicans isn't like that, but it's going to take more. It's going to is I have more boundaries up, mm -hmm. and because of this situation that I went through, I can point it out. I can point out a red flag in a minute. Mm -hmm. I mean, I had one try to test me six months ago, and I can see a red flag from a mile away. Mm -hmm. You know, it's. It's harder to get into the access me. So I'm not taking it out on every man. There's some good Jamaican men. There's a couple of families that I follow on YouTube and they seem good. You know, there's they seem good. You know, your skin, you don't know what happened behind somebody's closed doors, but you know, they seem good. Right. Not every man is like that. And I think that I need to go through this situation so I can create some boundaries in my life. Now, what I want to say to you, Carla, is this before we wrap up, right? Mm -hmm. moving forward try not to be so secretive um with your family you know i do understand that your yeah, relationship your relationship is your relationship and has nothing to do with your family but if you're in a situation where your husband or your boyfriend is abusive don't keep that to yourself tell it to a friend tell it to a family and you mentioned that your your, your, your family is is huge with plenty men so you have protectors right so moving forward make sure that you don't be so secretive always make sure that you communicate with them what's going on right and one thing you should have never done was when you left to go to jamaica to meet this person you should have never left the u.s without telling your family members you're going to meet this person you should have never done that. And I know. I look back and I didn't tell two friends. But other than that, I look back and I see that. I see all the mistakes. So trust me, everyone that's listening to that, 
I see everything. I was at a broken place, so I see mm-hmm. everything that I made a mistake doing, and it'll never ever happen again. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's the first when I do start dating again. He has to meet the men in my family. If he don't want to do it, then we can't talk because there's a reason why he hid himself from the men in my family. Mm-hmm. When I even showed them a picture of him, the men in my family was like, "Yeah, that's why he didn't want to come around us because we can see through the act." I can tell you this man ain't up to no good. And if he would have came around us, we would have told you. Mm-hmm. So. Now, I do hope, I do hope that from this experience, you have learned to love yourself way more. Please tell me you've learned to love yourself because oh, the course. only way he was able to manipulate you the way he did is because I think you wanted that love. And he wanted to feel some kind of love. And he was playing on those emotions. Right? So please make sure that you've you've learned to love yourself before you even try to search for love from someone else. Because that is what they're going to do. They're going to play on your emotions. Right? Now, you mentioned exactly. that you're in therapy. How is that working for you? Oh, my goodness. It's been, so, it been such a beautiful process. And that's why I also had the passion of being a therapist, a counselor myself, because the process was so beautiful. I got to dig back down in old issues and I realized I had daddy issues that also contributed to my choices. And I really got to really get my power back. And I really got to really love myself for everything I am for my flaws and all. Mm -hmm. And it made me so powerful. Mm-hmm. You know, and I, I used, I was really hard on myself and I was really scared to really come past and tell my story because I was like, what do people think I'm dumb? But I know that this is going to save somebody's life and I don't care what nobody think about me. This is my story well, and how me. I overcame trust and how me. I'm living and breathing. With this platform, no one judges you. We listen and mm-hmm. it's never a, this is a judgment free platform in fact i'm going to open the phone lines right now so that if anyone wants to call mm-hmm. in and say a few words to you i'm quite sure it's going to be positivity you know everyone here may be thinking what they think but i'm sure no one is going to be thinking yo you're a fool or she's an idiot or she. no you know everyone here we, we we want to to understand what you went through and make sure that you know you're healing right so mm-hmm. viewers the phone line is yeah. open eight seven six four two zero three three six eight what would you like to say to this scholar tonight she went through hell dating this person and i want to point it out that not all jamaican men you know we're not all like that right yes you have some who get some great opportunities and you know act a fool dr miad good night well, go on talk to me Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night, I'm and Good night, caller. All right. So I must, applaud the, I must applaud the caller. Um, at first, I was so mad. I'm still upset because there are some red flags. Caller, you can't send him to me. Beat him. <laughs> beat him with a two by four. You, you want somebody like Dr. Mia. Dr. Mia don't want somebody to play with. You know how much relationship me in because the moment they raise their voice for me, me throw them out. One night, me put out one, 12 o'clock in the night, me say, anyway, you forget taxi, go along your yard, come, I will kick you down. Hmm. I don't have foolishness, unstoppable. Hmm. Nobody now come, come treat me less of a woman. Listen, lady, I'm a big girl. And trust me, when me tell you, me love myself. At first, one point in time, in my last, in my relationship, in my marriage, I was still a bit down, blaming myself for some stuff, but now, Nobody can come to me with their nonsense. We mm. all learn. It's I wouldn't blame you because you know sometimes we women look for love in the wrong places mm-hmm. and we we'll try to find it from men who worse if we never get it from with daddy and the daddy wasn't around. We only see the females. Or if the even if there's a whole house full of men, they're all going about their business. They, they don't show we love and technically that's what we look for in men love. But you know what's the beauty about it? We can look for the love in men, you know, because we're not going to really be in a relationship and not knowing that they don't love us. But what we need to do is learn to love ourselves. When we take off our clothes, no matter how big you are, you could have big like a truck. 
take off your clothes and look in at the mirror and tell yourself so listen i'm big and i'm beautiful and no one is better than me and i'm better than nobody keep repeating those to yourself and no one will come across you with that stupidity again next time you're not them down or you call the police if you know get if you know i get into any trouble mm -hmm. but listen i applaud you to get out I am so thankful that you get out with your life intact. And even though you get a few scratches and bruises, I'm glad you're learning, you're in therapy, and you take that and make good of yourself. Now find time for you, do you, take yourself out on a treat, do some things for yourself, and when the right man comes along, you will know. Mm -hmm. I, My father told me something a long time ago, and I'm going to tell you this. My father told me, he's late, he died, he said to me, my child, when you find a man next, find a man that loves you. And when I asked him why, because then time that I was in my twenties, and he said, when you find a man that loves you, then he will treat you like the queen that you are. But when you find a man that you're attracted to, you will always try to go above and beyond to love him, love mm -hmm. him, love him. You will never know if he loves you. Mm -hmm. So find a man that loves you and when the time is right, God will bless you with one. For now, take some time, do you and treat yourself and love yourself and be proud of who you are. Next time, when you when you when you when you go out with someone, if you go out on a date and them look on you and tell you say yeah, they get too big, just tell them, listen, I am big and beautiful. And if you can't accept me for who I am, then we're not going anywhere further than this. I saw it said right See here. Yes, you Thank you so much, Mia. See you, Mia. All sir. right, blessings. All right, big up yourself, blessings. Mia. Blessings. All right. All right, Carly, you hear Dr. Mia's mouthful? Yes. Mm -hmm. Big and beautiful, and own it. You got, you, you got to own it. No matter nobody put you down, Carla. Because I'm looking at your, your photo, and you're a beautiful woman. I can't see your body, but it doesn't really matter. You know, I just said this the other day that, you know, we, women you have to start telling yourself you're beautiful it, don't wait on anybody else to tell you that you're beautiful for you to know you're beautiful correct all right so carla good night you're live hello all right let me take another one then this one is quiet let me take another call then Ivan, can you hear me? Hello? Carla, good night, you're live. Good night. I just want to let that lady know that it's great what she has done. She has done it late, but it was good that in all through the, her process, she never let go of God and she never forget to pray. And her experience was sad. He sounded like he was getting the phone in, mm -hmm. like he just getting the phone in. But I'm glad the way she dealt with it, and I'm glad that we finally see herself when she's trying to help others not to go into it. It was very, very sad what happened to her, and she should have seen the red flag a long time. But I mean, the Lord know why he let it carry on, and because he gives no one more than they can bear. So I'm glad that she never let go of the Lord, and she's still with the Lord, and the way she done with it. and. I hope he's, he, he realizes himself and go and seek treatment. I'm not totally condemning him neither. He right. sounds sick. Hmm. Yeah. All right, Carla. Well, I'm glad. Thank you so much for okay. your input. All right, good night. Carla, good night. You're live. Hey, good night. Um, hello? Yes, go ahead. We can hear you. Yes, all I'm going to say um, to that young lady, I'm so glad that she get away she with She can hear you. Back. Speak to her directly. She can hear you. Yes, mm. young lady, I am so glad that you get away with your life intact. And I'm telling you, the next time somebody tell you, attack you with your weight, don't you ever look, just get up, walk away, and don't ever look back. Mm -hmm. Because all they do, once they attack you with your weight, then, then the next thing it leads up to verbally, lead to physically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm so I'm so glad God helped her to get away. That's yeah. all I want to say. All right, Carla, thank you so have, much. Have a good have a good night. Good night, Carla. Good night. You're alive. Hi. Good night. How are you? I'm great. Thank you. I just want to say to the lady that I'm glad that she's out of it, and there's a song that I want to share with her. 
It's um, by Kirk Franklin and Yolanda Adams. After a while, this too shall pass. You will heal again. And you should tell someone that's what you're doing right now. And God sees everything that you're doing right now. And I'm very sorry this happened to you. I'm Jamaican. All Jamaican men are not like that. Mm -hmm. Not. There are some beautiful men out there, caring men. You just met the wrong one. But guess what? He didn't know what he had. And the next thing I'm going to tell you, I don't know. You sound white to me, and I'm a black girl. My advice to you is watch some Medea movie, and you will be trained after that. Have a good night. Bye-bye. All right, Carla. Blessings. Call a good night your life. Yes, I would like to tell my story about uh, being married to a Jamaican man, Nixon. What happened? But right. I won't be so long. I'll make it short. All right, but I, what I'm going to have to do, Carla, let's schedule a night for you because I'm about to wrap up. So what to do, just send me a message and say I'd like to share my story and I'll give you a call back, okay? Okay. All right, Carla. Thank you so much for reaching out. Call a good night, you're live. Oh, good night. Yes, good night. Good night. Yeah, calling from um, Toronto. Go ahead, we can hear you. All right, so Carla, I want to first thank you, you know, because you you're doing this because you want to bring awareness based on what you said, correct? Yes. You know, you want to bring, she wants to bring awareness to other women out there who may fall for this, right? Now, based on this story that we heard tonight, and I, though I'm calling it a story, we know it's not a story. It's an experience that she, she is something she experienced. And other persons, uh, we, we heard a lot of these experiences being shared on this platform. So she wants to prevent this from happening again to another woman that may land a man like this. Right? So that is the reason why she is sharing. And I want to thank you so much again for sharing with us tonight because, you know, we may be talking right now and we don't know who your story may touch tonight and who it may help right so this is a great deed that you did and i'm glad that you're in therapy i'm glad that you're healing i'm glad that you've learned to love yourself and i want to wish you all the best of luck and you said that um since he left since the police you know took him away he never contacted you again so that's awesome so now you could move on with your life and be happy and as as dr mia said when the right man comes along you will be perfectly fine correct exactly exactly all right carla i want to wish you a great night and thank you so much once again for reaching out to me all right yes and thank you for your platform and thank you audience for your warm words and i, I wish, wish you all have a good night all right thank you so much good night good night viewers this one tonight whoa mm. whoa this one tonight is, is, is definitely one that has us all wondering, what the hell? You know, but like the caller said, she wants to educate other women. Because remember, experience teaches wisdom, you know. So she experienced it and she's using her experience to inform you of the things that you should not stand for or accept we're at the end of tonight's program. I've gone over by 47 minutes. Now you know I said that I will leave part time because the program ends in exactly one hour. But before I leave, I want to thank everybody who tuned in tonight. Big up to my Facebook crew. You guys was awesome over here tonight. There was one and two people who I had to block because as you know already, like I said, you know, where I see disrespect or name calling, I immediately block. So there were one and two that I had to block. But other than that, um, you know, 
you guys were awesome over here big up to the people them over faiths over youtube my moderators over there who were on point making sure that the comment section was clean thank you so much i appreciate that dr mia thank you so much for helping me to moderate on facebook side i do appreciate that thanks to everyone that shared out the show on facebook and youtube thank you so much that is appreciated all right before i leave again i want to make sure that everyone here understands this this is a platform that you can share your story on your experience on without ever have to worry about being judged so if you have a similar experience like this caller's experience and you feel like you want to share it whether it is just to get it off your chest or whether it is just to enlighten someone else about situations like these feel free to send a WhatsApp message to the number on the screen. It's 876-420-3368. And all you need to say is unstoppable. I want to share my story and I will definitely give you a call back and schedule a show for you. All right. You don't have to worry about being judged. You don't have to worry about being ridiculed. You don't have to worry about anyone calling you fool, dunce, idiot or anything like that. You will be perfectly fine and safe over here. All right. Viewers. Thank you so much for tuning in tonight. I do appreciate every single person here. And before I leave, I want to ask everybody to please, 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 please sign up on Facebook. If you are on Facebook and you have not signed up to become an official supporter of the page, please click where it says become a supporter and sign up all right my youtube crew thank you so much to everybody who constantly um, signing up over here you know i do appreciate having all our as supporters you know 100 percent support the platform thank you so much all right it's just facebook no need for catch up as far as signing up to become a supporter on the way behind facebook and i know we can do better all right if you haven't signed up yet please sign up to become a supporter and i also want to inform everyone that we have the merch store the unstoppable merch store where you can get your unstoppable garments whether it's a hoodie whether it's a shirt whether it's a a, 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 a leggings a cup a bag support the merch store all right the link is in the description of all videos so just click the link and go support the merch store it is appreciated all right big up to everybody who's tuning in tonight me see the unstoppable family and march out over here on youtube but you know we're not gonna do the march out tonight because i'm a bit tired all right and i've gone over 40 40 odd minutes already so i will see everyone on friday thank you so much for tuning in good night Feel the music, ooh eh. Feel the music, ooh eh. Move your waistline, ooh eh. Move your shoulders, ooh eh.